So, um, so we are not only doing software. Um, we do product design, uh, fabrication, and deployment of exhibitions as well. Um, let me give you a short overview of our projects. Um, <coughs> Europe, Europe's latest science center in Czech Republic. This was a 4,000 square meter um, exhibition hall with 130 exhibits. Uh, we had a period of six months to assemble everything. Uh, we had a team of 100 co-workers working from concept drafting, constructing the whole thing, fabricating it in-house, shipping it there, deploying it, and uh, doing the, the handover. <coughs> we have the science tunnel, <coughs> sorry, which is one of the world's um, most successful science traveling exhibitions. It was touring since 2000 through the world. It had more than 40 venues uh, in total. Um, we did here again the concept, the fabrication, and we do the touring since now. At the moment it is in Peru, in Lima, and it will pack down in uh, two weeks and travel to um, Quito in Ecuador. Um, ah, sorry, yeah. <coughs> this one, uh, we did once build a, an uh, exhibition in 12 railroad coaches in India. So this uh, train was traveling through India um, for six years and it had over seven million visitors. Um, this picture shows um, our deployment on site. So the challenging part from this project was to assemble and fabricate everything in Germany, put it into containers, ship it to India, and then uh, we had to deploy it in India's biggest uh, cage, uh, coach factory, which is in a city called Kapotala in, in, in uh, Punjab. Um, <coughs> uh, we do complex product developments as well as long as they are somehow connected to science and uh, museums, trade fairs, or stuff like that. So <coughs> this is an uh, interactive robot installation where the robot um, tries to get your emotions through a camera stream uh, and then uh, 12 motors drive the robotic phase and this robot tries to interact with you. Um, <coughs> so. The development time <coughs> for a project like this was in total three months. We had, again, about 20 co-workers working on this. And uh, this is one exhibit <coughs> which we put in science centers to explain people how complex, let's say, on one hand, the image processing is. On the other hand, the, um, the state machine behind some kind of, uh, let's say, gestures and how complex um, human gestures are. Um, we are passionate about um, diverse projects as long as they are somehow uh, challenging. And all in all, we <coughs> are specialized in lot size one productions for exhibit related services. Um, this talk is about our implementation of the Atlassian ecosystem in our company um, to drive our projects, our teams, and the complete company. So, we implemented the ecosystem to get a better live, live data view. And with this live data, that, uh, to get better forecasts and better, let's say, basement for decisions. And in the end, we um, would like to have a very transparent single source of truth uh, so that we have one platform for everyone in the company to um, communicate their business data and a basement for their communication inside the project itself. So let's go through the agenda. <coughs> so I just shortly introduce uh, our company. Then um, what are the main challenges in our specific business? Um, I explain the toolbox we use inside, um, inside the um, ecosystem. Then I explain how we get the data in and how we get the team aligned to use such a single source of truth construct. And um, then uh, I would like to end with the conclusion. So the company profile, um, we are a multidisciplinary creative agency. <coughs> we are a one-stop shop for exhibitions in museum science centers, trade fairs, showrooms, and stuff like this. Um, we try to cover all skills needed for having the complete life cycle for services like this in our house. So we have creation, we have development and engineering, we have software developers, we have hardware developers. Um, we have a specialized team for IT deployments and physical deployments of our exhibitions 
all over the world, and we are, have trained personnel for uh, service and support. And <coughs> we try to gather all these uh, skills with a team of 50 co-workers, and we organize them with the Atlassian ecosystem. So we started <coughs> 1996 in post-war Berlin. Um, it was, let's say, uh, we had vast spaces, low-cost rents, and uh, it was a marvelous playground with uh, lots of creative people think thinking outside the box. And um, uh, they helped us to get our business started. <coughs> Some quick facts. Um, all in all, we had in all our exhibitions, all time, more than 20 million visitors. Um, we have a core team of 50 co-workers and we can easily scale up to 100. Um, our business is super project-based, means we don't have customers being there and giving us contracts, contracts, contracts. We have, let's say, we have to pitch and tender for contracts and once the, f uh, the project is done, we have to get on for another one. Um, our projects are often very, very dense. What I mean by this is that the time we need to order spe specific hardware goods is in the range of the project itself. This means we have to start ordering this stuff m while we are doing the user action and user um, experience design of the exhibits. And then we have to fit everything together into the last second and deploy it and uh, give it, hand it over to the, to the client. To be able to do this, um, we use the Atlassian tools. So <coughs> let's go to the main challenges. Um, we all know it. There has been, let's say, a dramatic market change in the in the last decade, and uh, we we have to deliver more in, um, in 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 less time for less money and higher complexity and better quality. And this introduced a certain pain in 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 our, um, in our um, work culture. The, our documents and on, on our project data was nearly always outdated. And it was like meeting, talking, calling, and updating, and, and, and meeting again, and uploading it, and always this lagged behind the actual project status. And this created super noise in our company and stalled our developments and stalled um, the, <coughs> the team itself, and it risked the overall pro uh, success of our projects. Um, <clears throat> so our way out of this mess was to create one single source of truth um, in which we create a single information architecture which is driven by live data and workflows and is guided by permissions so that everyone in the company could be sure that the data inside this source are really true and are the actual state of the, of the project itself. So. Um, smart tools like this need even smarter people um, in, in the company operating with these tools. And so we had a strong need for a friendly, scalable, and adjustable solution um, to just to limit the onboarding problems and uh, to ensure the longevity of our single source of truth throughout one project for many projects, many simultaneous projects. So <coughs> our toolbox and our favorite add-ons or just a section out of it. Um, we use JIRA for tracking and planning. We use Confluence for documentation, project communication, and approvals. We use HipChat for ad hoc communication, if you need something very urgent. And we use Bitbucket for de the developers. Um, a few add-ons, we have EasyBI, which is a charting add-on. We use this for display and aggregate lots of data um, and display it on Confluence pages or within Jira dashboards. We use timesheets um, for logging work and get the approval process, process of logged work hours done somehow, and we can la do labor hours calculations. And we use Structure, um, a plugin which we use for organizing thousands of issues in our company to make the issues and the tasks people have to do very, very quickly. Um, you can slice and dice the, the, the data inside JIRA and um, aggregate and combine them in perspectives, share these perspectives with other coworkers so that they really have the information they need at that moment. <coughs> 
our Jira mapping is as follows. We, use, we make heavily use of custom fields. We have approximately 80 of them. Um, we use several different issue types. It's about 10. And uh, our workflows are highly adjusted to um, our workflows we have in, in the company. And everything is driven by um, permissions and for access and workflow permissions, also um, um, validators and uh, conditional permissions in the, in the workflows itself. So <coughs> we uh, created a machine which we call La Machina. And this, this machine takes um, all the project metadata, the, the cash flow, um, the time tracking data, the procurement data we have, operating budget of our complete company, uh, our sales funnel data, and uh, workload estimates inside this machine. And from this uh, machine, we then aggregate and do forecasts, um, have approvals in the system, have project documentation communication, we use this machine for external file sharing with our, with our clients. And um, we have a um, growing data set for post-mortem analysis of our projects. So once we have a project, we have lots of custom uh, um, solutions in there. We have a document about this, and so we can take this over into the next project. <coughs> so the next uh, point is how do we get the data in? Um, or better, how do we map the JIRA ecosystem or the Atlassian ecosystem to our specific needs in our niche market. Um, the ratio of labor cost in our project expenses is 60%. So how do we get valid labor cost calculations? What we do is we just allow no other system for logging work than uh, JIRA. Everyone has log their time in JIRA, it's even if it's an executive, the craftsman in the workshop, the uh, UX designer, whoever, everyone has to log their work in JIRA. We have, we implemented a feedback loop to assure that these uh, time logs are valid. We do it by the employees <coughs> need their, um, their work hours for um, the calculation of their over or under times and for their holidays. And the freelancers need uh, the work logs for Invoicing, So this is definitely a reg self-regulating workflow so that we can ensure that the data in the system is really the real data. <coughs> so once we have the data in, what we do is we take the time tracking data out of JIRA. We have an hour hourly rate database in, a, in another system. I would say it's Google Spreadsheets. And um, uh, we have the hourly rates connected to an effective date. And what we do then is we merge both data in, uh, in EasyBI and display the, um, the labor costs in EasyBI. So once you have done this, <coughs> I mean, you can do everything um, you want. You can have labor costs per project, per department, and even you can do this company-wide. You know? um, and this gives... Um, gives us uh, certain abilities for doing forecasts, where do we need some new team members, um, which kind of department is understaffed, and, and so on, and so on. So um, the next thing is, um, is a bit more trickier. Um, the part of our project expenses in material cost is 40%. So how do we get the material expenses in our specific setting into the JIRA system. Um, it is tricky because we have a strong need for a distributed acquisition and procurement in, 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 our, in our team, um, which means that there is no time for having one centralized person or department or team doing all the procurements. We have an average per project 500 different procurements. And these procurements, 50% of them are below 100 euros. So um, these procurements need a very super special knowledge for the persons from the hardware development side, from the media technician, from uh, the, the artist buying render hours at a, sp a specific, specific render farm, or you name it. Um, so we need to enable everyone in the company to do their procurements by themselves without losing control. Uh, remember, our, our project time is very dense, no? so we have no, we have no, uh, no time for having, let's say, 
um, a person um, not doing a procurement because the delivery times are longer or are even long as our um, project times. So we created um, one specific issue type which is called procurements with approval. And we track with this issue type all the procurements inside our company. We have a three-level system, which is procurements below 500 euros can be done by everyone without a, an approval. The approval from 500 to 5,000 euros can be done with the project management approval. And uh, expenses above 5,000 euros can be done only with an executive approval. So let me explain this in, in detail. So this is Marco, our systems designer. And Marco has a great idea for an exhibit. Um, he wants to prototype an exhibit where we have a lucky cat uh, being, which can turn and which can uh, wave hello. And for this exhibit, he needs a very special motor, a servo motor, which he can control from his computer. Um, so this is fairly easy for him, so he writes a procurement ticket. Um, in this procurement ticket, he enters the estimated expenses, and this procurement ticket is created in a, in a status which is called planned. Um, Marco enters the, the, the cost and, and the, the details of the motor, and then Marco reaches out with, this, um, with the unique issue ID from this procurement ticket as internal reference numbers for quote. So he's asking for a quote, a company who sells this, this motors and say, please make sure that the issue ID is on our, um, on, 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 our, on our invoice. We do this so that the accounting, the classical accounting, which receives then the, the bills and the invoices have a reference to this ticket. Um, Marco updates the um, procurement with approval ticket with exactly the cost, most cost-effective offer. He uploads it and then um, he transitions the ticket to the uh, approval stage <coughs> where either the um, project manager or the um, executive gets a notification automatically out of the JIRA system that he has to do some approval in this um, for, for buying these, these motors and for these expenses. Um, Marco can now place the order and um, he enters an anticipated delivery date into the, uh, into the procurement ticket to inform our reception. The reception then receives hundreds of packages every day. They go through the packages, look for the ticket ID number, which, they, which is somewhere written on, on, on the invoices, and then they mark the, the package as in-house. Marco gets an automatic notification that his package arrived, and Marco can start to work on his exhibit. He can assemble it, and then Marco is, is happy because he, it was more or less effortless to get these uh, expenses approved, and um, the project manager is happy because they know exactly what um, time and money has to be spent on, on an exhibit like this. Um, so the Lucky Cat exhibit here is uh, really an exhibit we built, and it was like um, 49 cats, um, each driven with two motors, and we had a total development time of 24 weeks in a team with 20 co-workers, and this exhibit created 200 plus issues in JIRA. So half of it were procurements like washers, bowls, and whatever, and uh, the other half are, let's say, workshop tickets, CNC milling tickets, and so on and so on. So this is how the ticket looks like. <coughs> we have a table grid, which is another plugin, which I forgot to mention, um, which is responsible for this uh, shopping list there. Um, in this shopping list, we gather all the things you want to procure at one supplier. Then we have one calculated uh, total field, which is on the and below, um, which gathers the, comp the cost for this one procurement, and we have traditional um, accounting fields for the payment method and if the um, and fields they need for do for, for getting the system uh, the, the the procurement out of the system into their system. I, I mean, we have classical accounting, yeah, and <laughs> they they do all the stuff they need with with tickets like this. We do this to get, let's say, information in the project what kind of money we spend. No? So the last two points were about uh, the, the facts, how we spend money. And um, now we can take a look uh, in a point uh, how we get 
some cash in the, the company. And we have one outgoing invoice per workday. This is um, not much compared to the number of procurements we, we have to do. Um, but on the other hand, it's, it's, it's big enough to have a standardized process for this. And what we do in JIRA, we um, have a dedicated bookkeeping project in JIRA. And each exhibition project we have um, ha is, has one accounting issue type in this project. And all the invoices for this project are subtasks to this accounting process in the accounting or bookkeeping project. Um, these subtasks, these invoice subtasks, have three custom fields, which is the invoice value, so the amount of money we get, the invoicing date, this is the date where we uh, send the invoice to the client, and the date uh, where the money should be on our account. Um, with these two date fields, we set up an automatic escalation service, which checks if the due date of the money is, uh, let's say, should have been five days ago, then the complete issue, uh, invoice issue is moved to an overdue loop so that we can do the appropriate calls. Um, every aggregation of all these invoices over time um, obviously um, map fairly precisely the cash inflow of our company. So um, with this data at hand, we can precisely say what money is coming in our, company, uh, in our company with the two points before we know exactly more or less the outflow of our, um, of our cash, uh, naming it labor cost, operating budget, and uh, material cost. And um, if, when we, if we want to put everything together, um, making sense of all this data, yeah, I mean, we can do something which we call company health. So we subtract from the cash inflow all the labor costs, the uh, procurements, the operating costs, and then we exactly know in a very, let's say, precise matter what, uh, what the company looks like and what we have to fear if we have some, let's say, some holes in our, um, um, in, 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 in our pipeline. So remember, we are, we are project-based. No? So we have to, let's say, if we see in, in six months there is a hole in our pipeline and there is no according project, we have to get one no? because we have no subscription for our services. So if you have all the data in, you can do, obviously, um, the complete data gymnastics you want to do, uh, like um, calculating the, the non distinguish the billable and non-billable hours and expenses via project category in, in JIRA or doing average hourly rates, or having team hours, uh, department hours, whatever you need for doing your specific forecasts and uh, whatever data you need for making your decisions. <coughs> so, something very completely different. How to get our team aligned. Um, we have an adoption rate in our company of 99%. This means we have to onboard personalities, personalities uh, like the craftsman in the workshop itself, the UX designer, the engineer, the software developers, they all have to be part of our single source of truth um, in the Atlassian ecosystem. They need to know it and they need to work with it. So what we did to make them able to participate in our system is we map the ecosystem to our work culture and not vice versa. So we carefully checked what kind of work processes we had, how we can improve them, and what we can do with um, what we can do to improve them, and then map the ecosystem to our existing work culture. We took our time for staged rollouts, um, meaning that um, we took workflow by workflow and department by department and trained the people. Trained the people, obviously, and <coughs> everyone felt the pain without a single source of truth in our business. So now everyone that we are having one, now everyone knows that uh, it's worth fighting for and what worth participating in our <coughs> single source of truth. So we have 20 simultaneous projects, and this means high throughput. We Sometimes we have to go for two shift systems, sometimes even three shift systems in our workshops. Um, 
Uh, and uh, let me say, like it is, there's a way around it. Um, we, we, we have to embrace the schedule. So we have fixed deadlines and we have fixed feature tests most often. So there is no, no, there's little room for Kanban and Scrum and all this. So we have to deliver our goods on time and there's no way around it. So we have to, <coughs> we have to work with the, with the estimates and the schedules. And in our single source of truth, we have one point exactly where every coworker can see what kind of budget we have. Uh, how many hours uh, are billed for this project or billable for this project, where, when the milestones are, what our deliveries are, and what the remaining estimates are, so that we all get, let's say, a feeling uh, of, okay, do I need to go for extra shifts or not? So, um, because um, this is more or less, um, this is mo more the territory than the map itself. Let me explain this. A few years ago, it was me doing the planning and others doing the job. And this, let's say, this tend to not fit together in, in, in one point. And now it is more like we have one point where we do the planning and the execution of the, of the jobs in, in this one single point. And this is a relief for everyone, for me not doing all the planning work and for the others participating in the planning itself. So <clears throat> let me explain this uh, for load balancing our um, milling machines. So this is Simon, our CNC operator. And... Uh, Simon likes to know what uh, jobs ahead of him. So um, he has, he's confronted with the fact that everyone in the product design department can create CNC tickets, so CNC jobs um, which has to be done on his machine. And the trick is these tickets are only created in a planned state with an initial estimate from the product design. Um, Marco, uh, Marco, Simon now checks the planned issues and checks the estimates if they are somehow valid and if they make sense or if he has to adjust them, higher them, lower them. And <clears throat> then he transitions all the checked data to a to-do state, which assembles himself a clean to-do list with exact estimates from his professional perspective. And then he knows his backlog and he knows the capacity, what he can do in one shift and he can checking the aggregates, and if he needs to, he can adjust um, his shifts, hire other freelancers, outsource the jobs to other companies, and um, then Simon is happy because he knows exactly what, what, what he has to do and what he has to manage in the next week. Um, <coughs> checking this in, in structure, and uh, I told you we need we have per exhibit sometimes 200 issues, and we have exhibitions with 100 exhibits. So we talking about Jira projects which have more than thousand issues and uh, we need a tool like this to organize them somehow. Here we can see the um, aggregation of the estimated CNC milling hours in our CNC pipeline. So this uh, is a picture I took, I would say, three weeks ago. Um, we have total in our pipeline, we have nearly three weeks of milling time, meaning at that point, I took the picture, it was only two weeks for the opening, and it meant, okay, we cannot do it with one shift, so we hired another um, operator um, so that they can split work in two shifts, and two shifts easily could make this happen. So, let's talk about multi-projects and multi-stakeholder communication. This can be a bit frustrating, you know? And, um, Let's talk about how we get less noise. And um, besides all other channels, we use Confluence for the project communication itself. It's fast enough for reliable information exchange. If you need, let's say, quick information, you can go for hip chart. Um, but whenever, our rule is whenever you need something to fix, you have to put it on the appropriate Confluence page. We have a pattern how the pages are set up. And so every coworker knows exactly where to go in conference and put their statements there. So what we do is we include lots of data from JIRA itself. Um, we use the comments as log history, as communication log, uh, so that we know what, what is happening. And um, we use the ad mentions to pull the appropriate coworkers in. So an example for this is the drawing approval with clients. So when we build things uh, in, in exhibitions, there's normally one milestone which is called the drawing approval where we present 
the client the drawings of the things we will build for him in the in for the next milestone so like measurements uh, what kind of media technique is built in there, what kind of material colors and all this stuff. So this is a drawing approval stage. And um, we have been part of a 10 million euro project in, in uh, 2013 um, with lots of other companies and the complete drawing exchange was done um, via FTP server. This created lots of mess. And now we thought, okay, it might be perhaps a bit better to do the drawing exchange and the communication in one place. So we created something which we call the external space. And we, we share the external space with our, co with our external clients and our coworkers. We have special template there for uploading our drawings. And the um, external party is invited to go there, comment everything inside the drawings with the inline comments or with the, let's say, pin comments inside the drawings itself and <clears throat> they can participate and they can really talk to the one doing the drawing. Before that, it was like me sending out the drawings, getting the feedback from the client and putting the client back to, let's say, the coworker. And now we have everything in one place. The, the third party can, let's say, escalate everything to me. I mean, if they need, let's say, a decision or a major change or, or whatever, they can just add mention me and then I step in. So <clears throat> here is an example for this. This is exactly one exhibit. We did for one exhibition with 50 exhibits. And in this drawing approval log, there are 40 entries with mixed media, like videos, uh, pictures for material approval, um, drawings, sketches for how things should be done, and uh, some, let's say, last minute changes. And um, imagine this, doing this with email and FTP. This is totally not working. So, the conclusion. <clears throat> so, our case is kind of special, but um, with the toolbox uh, we had, we can, map, uh, we, we can map it to even our use case, and we solved some huge problems. Um, we, now we have reliable workflows for most every part in our company, and um, we have a tailored information architecture for our team so that they can rely on this information architecture. And it's not like, ah, yeah, I uploaded it somewhere and I don't know where it is. So this is, um, this is a huge major advance for us. And uh, the management is equipped with better information for um, strategical and tactical decision making, um, which we obviously need. And what you can do is find areas which need improvement um, by checking if you gather the right data in your work processes and if you involve the right people at the right moment in your processes. Jira is, is really an, a, a nice da database if you're not pushing it too far. And um, you should map the ecosystem to your work culture and not vice versa. And here, one hint, uh, no worries, the system itself can be iterated. So this is what we did as well. Like you can start with one simple workflow and then get everyone used to it and then slightly enhance it and update it um, um, over the course of time so that you at one point have a really perfect fitting workflow for a specific department or case. And um, get rid of excess noise and put efforts in templates, training, um, new workflows in, in low pressure times and then train your people, and then you are prepared for crunch times. So just do it. Thanks.